Hi, this is Teresa from Phoenix Gate Crafts. About two years ago or so, in uh, July of 2018, I picked up my very first pair of knitting needles. Um, I had spent many years crocheting before that, and in picking up another fiber art, I realized there's some advice that is specific to crocheters who are teaching themselves how to knit. So I wanted to give you a little bit of advice, tell you some things that I wish I'd known at the time, and give you every chance of picking up this new skill as easily as possible. So let's get started. So, first things first, be patient with yourself. I know this seems kind of like, well, duh, but the thing of it is, is that we're coming from a place where we're already doing a yarn craft and we're picking up another yarn craft that looks very similar. So similar that most people can't tell that this is crochet. I mean, a lot of people get them mixed up. They look very similar. They make pretty much all the same products, but they're actually two very different forms of art. They look similar. Operationally speaking, you are doing something completely different. And while you're learning how to do that, it is a completely new skill set. I mean, you already know about yarn and that's great but the actual how to deal with the needles, how to get the stitches to look the way you need them to. There's a whole bunch of things that are minute but different, enough so that it might take you a few attempts to get started and learning your new skill. And that is completely okay. It took me at least three times to get started. And I mean, I had wooden straight needles, I had uh, cotton yarn and I was making washcloths because cotton's what you use for washcloths and I just happened to have these needles from the darn good yarns box and I hated it. It was awful. It was very uncomfortable, awkward, alien feeling even, but after a few attempts I started getting the hang of it and it was slow going, way slower than I expected because coming from a crochet background, I thought, oh yeah, no problem, I'll be able to pick this up, but it's a very different way of handling yarn. And it took me a while to adjust. It's um, kind of like French and Italian. Technically, they're both romance languages. They're both sister languages, daughters of Latin, but they're different enough even though, you know, the core root words are based off the same words, they're different enough that when you are speaking French, you're not automatically going to be able to understand Italian and vice versa. So it's just like that with knitting and crochet. It's like, oh, hey, all this yarn stuff I know, but what the heck is, how do you knit two together? <laughs> Is it as simple as it sounds? Uh, pro tip, yes it is. So anyway, just give yourself some love, some patience and realize you do have this. It just might take a little bit of time before your brain starts translating. Next is learning via YouTube. There's a strong chance you're going to be learning uh, English style knitting first and this one is a weird one because when we crochet um, you operate the hook in one hand and you tension the yarn in the other but when you're knitting English which a vast majority of beginner tutorials teach they teach English style which is you operate the needle with your preferred hand and you throw the yarn around the needle with that same hand. It's slow, it's a bit laborious, and it is going to feel awkward as hell. The good news is if it does feel awkward as hell, you don't have to stick to English style. 
you can switch to continental. Continental is just like crochet where you're going to operate with one hand and then you're going to tension with the other. Um, there's several different styles. There's uh, Portuguese, there's, um, of course now I'm filming this, I can't think of any. There's um, Norwegian, there's uh, Swedish, I believe. That's the one where the yarn goes around your neck, whatever that one's called, I think it's Swedish. Don't quote me on that though. So feel free to hunt around for the style that feels right for you. Most of us crocheters feel more natural with continental. So if you can find a tutorial, um, beginner knitting continental style, um, you probably find that a little bit easier to get going. Um, but to each their own, if none of it feels good for you, give it a couple of tries and then move on to a different style and see if that clicks. Eventually it will, eventually you'll find the one that works best for you. Um, and just so as you know, Continental works best for me. Tensioning your yarn might be a little bit different. So when we crochet, because we're doing loops within loops, most of our crochet stays pretty well. I mean, it's a pretty rare thing where you set down your yarn, nothing happens to it and stitches come undone. It's much more likely to happen with knitting. Not something you need to worry about, just make sure your stitches are fully on your needle and you should be fine. Because things are more likely to come out, the tension requirements are different between knitting and crochet. You might have to tension your yarn in your tensioning hand a little bit differently. So like when I am crocheting, I tend to just have the yarn come up through one finger over the other so that way I have control. I move so fast that all I need is just between these two fingers and I am able to, you know, stop the yarn from going when I need it to. It doesn't require that much. However, you might find that when you're knitting, you need either more or less tension than when you're crocheting. Uh, blessed be the few who don't see any difference, but most of us do have to tension a little bit differently. So I notice I have to tension more when I knit. So I have to wrap the yarn around my middle finger when I knit versus I don't have to do that when I crochet. And you might find that you need to tension your yarn a little bit differently as well. So just know it is normal, it is okay, you are not doing anything wrong. As long as you're getting the tension right so that you can knit and it looks uniform, you're doing it right. Uh, knitting is very much like crochet where a bunch of people tell you there's a right way and very rarely is there actually a right way. Along with the tensioning, you might notice there's some different wear and tear on your hands. Um, knitting tends to be at a different pace than crochet. So typically, things don't necessarily rub through your fingers in the same way. Hence also why you need to probably tension your yarn a little bit differently. Um, but just the action of knitting. You know, when you're crocheting, you're doing this motion a lot. And that's not exactly what you do when you knit. It's kind of, you could be doing this, which is a little bit different, or you could be doing this, which is different muscle structure in your hand. So if you'll notice your hand is getting tired in different areas than when you crochet, like when I crochet, I feel a lot of stress in um, the base of my thumb. Uh, but when I knit, I find I get tired more in the right hand side, you know, the outside of my hand instead. So just be aware that you're developing different muscles. I also notice that my fingers tended to get tired a little bit faster because you have to use all of your fingers when you're using knitting needles versus just a few when you're crocheting. So if you're getting tired, take a break. That's the best advice you can have. Take a break until your hands feel normal and you're ready to go again, and then 
go until you're tired. You're going to develop strength, you're going to develop stamina, and eventually you'll be fine. You don't want to overdo it because you can develop carpal tunnel or tendinitis, and you really don't want to let those get bad because they could require surgery. Also, you might notice that you're going to get blisters in different areas. Um, because I knit continental and I'm tensioning the yarn in this hand, I use this middle finger right here to do two things. It, I help guide my right hand needle with this finger. I also hold um, some of the loops of my yarn on the needle so they don't accidentally slip off. And as a result, the tip of this needle regularly brushes this finger. Um, just like any other time you're developing blisters, when it starts to feel red and uncomfortable, take a break. Wait until it feels completely normal. It might take a day and then start knitting again. And the thing is, if you're constantly rubbing and causing just that minute damage, then you're letting it heal, then you're causing more damage, then you're letting it heal, your skin will start to protect itself and you'll develop a callus. So yeah, I have a callus on this finger. You really can't tell because it's a callus. And you'll be able to um, naturally protect it. Um, in the meantime, you might want to do a Band-Aid or some medical tape, but in the long run, personally, I feel that calluses are a nice, natural way of your finger protecting itself. But also, don't be surprised if you do develop a couple of blisters in weird places because you're doing something different and you haven't developed that natural protection yet. You might notice that you are drawn to different yarns when you're knitting compared when you crochet. So something I noticed is that a lot of crocheters tend to lean towards acrylic yarns. And part of that is that acrylic costs a fraction of the price of wool and wool blends. Um, because crochet goes so much faster, you use so much yarn, you know, you're using up to two balls of yarn in an evening. Uh, you can go through the yarn really fast. And for the most part, acrylic feels different when you're crocheting from when you're knitting. It feels much more plastic when you're knitting, at least to me. Uh, quick caveat, everything is in my own opinion from here on out. But, um, you might find that you might prefer natural fibers when you knit. That's what happened to me. I much prefer wool and wool blends when I knit, and I prefer acrylic or cotton when I crochet. Um, they feel different. They go through my fingers at different rates, which affects how soft or rough they feel. Um, there's a stretch factor you need with knitting because you're basically getting a loop around your needle and then you have to stick another needle in there. So if you get a little bit of give or stretch in your uh, yarn, it, it feels so much better when you're knitting. So some of this is gonna come with experimentation. Some of it is going to come from reviews by other YouTubers. But eventually you'll realize that maybe when you're knitting, you like different yarns than when you're crocheting and you're not going to necessarily want to mix them. That is completely normal as well. Some people are a little bit less discerning. Sometimes you're restricted based on what you can afford. Um, but a lot of people have different preferences when they knit versus when they crochet. Last piece of advice. And this kind of relates to everything I've mentioned so far, but knitting is just plain slower. It is a slower process. You lose, you lose, <laughs> you use less yarn um, over the course of the project. Your fabric is drapier. It's a little less structured. And as a result of that slowness, because you're used to being able to work at such a breakneck speak, it might get very frustrating for you. So just remember, first one, 
be patient with yourself. It is a slower process. You know, I can crochet a good size shawl in a matter of about two evenings versus it takes me one to two weeks to knit the same size shawl. So it's just slower. You'll probably save on yarn in terms of the amount you need, but, and that's debatable. There's lots of YouTubers who can go either way on that one. But um, give yourself a break. If it feels like it's super slow, some of it is just the knitting and some of it will be you because you are picking up a new skill and that takes time to learn and cement in your head. So give yourself a break, keep on trying. If you've got that feeling in your heart that this is something you're meant to do, your heart doesn't lie to you in that. It will just take a little bit of experimentation. For example, when I started, I started with wooden straight needles. I had cotton yarn that I was using and the, it, it just wasn't working out. So I wound up getting some actual wool that I liked. I switched to metal needles, which I discovered was what I really liked and I switched to continental style of knitting. And once I had all three of those things in place, the stars were aligned and there was nothing holding me back anymore from knitting. So it's just gonna take some experimentation, figuring out what your preferences and your needs in knitting are, and then addressing them. So good luck with that. There's nobody who can tell you what is right for you. You're sadly going to have to figure it out yourself. So give it a try. If that doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try both of them again. You can always frog and start over, right? And um, the second thing you should learn after you learn knit and purl and cast on and cast off, learn how to tink and learn about lifelines. Trust me on that. Anyway, I hope this helps. Happy crafting. Good luck with your new skill. See you soon. Bye.